computer games. They're everywhere today. In every city around the world, you don't have to go far to lay your hands on a gamepad or a joystick. Computer games have definitely become cultural icons. I know they used to have quite a nerdy, geeky image, but increasingly they are absolutely massive. In terms of a market, they're number two now after music, which means that they beat cinema and video. There's no better example of that than the Tomb Raider series. The adventures of the Root and Toot and Lara Croft have sold over 20 million copies worldwide. She's an icon. She's definitely one of the world's bit girls. You've got these games that are so realistic, I'm sure you get a black eye. That was very realistic. <laughs> And they don't try any harder for that real-world feel than a joy police in Tokyo. With over a million punters pushing through the turnstiles every year, they must be doing something wrong. I really enjoy the car racing game because I played on a real car. When I play racing simulation games, it's only on a TV screen at home, but I was able to drive on a real Toyota today and I was really excited. <laughs> The cycling game was really exciting. It feels like you're really riding it. <laughs> yeah, exciting. And it's not just in Tokyo that arcade games are big business. Sega Europe adapts the Japanese machines for the special needs we have over here. The public is, is using uh, or, or abusing our machines, as often they do, so we've got to make sure that they uh, are up to the job. This is quite a good example of a design for European market. We've got plenty of room here to uh, relax your gaming muscles while you're playing. It's pretty tough, it's got base shakers here, we've got metal floor, stub your fags out on it, should be all right. It's waterproof, so when the pints go, hopefully it'll last. This is uh, Sega Strike Fighter. Um, this is the deluxe version. So this is the all singing, all dancing, top of the range with sunroof arcade machine. This will set you back as much as a new car. Triple screen, excellent sound. It's got bass shakers to give you the full sensation so you really feel like you're in the cockpit of one of these things. Something that would be difficult to recreate at home. It would take up most of your living room anyway. But there are loads of people playing in their living rooms and they're getting a totally different gaming experience. I play very regularly. Um, during the week, I tend to play for about half an hour or 60 minutes. Um, and then kind of at the weekend, it's more of a social thing. But I think there's quite a lot of fun uh, to be had from beating your friends. Even if you've not got a high score, if you've beaten them, then that's what counts. And it's very important to win. There's a lot of banter involved in the gaming. So, you know, if someone loses, they're going to be in for it. And if you win, that's a lot of elation. Let's cross in. Yes, a simple goal in the end. 2 0 then. We have had some problems over the years with getting blisters and calluses, generally on the tops of the fingers and on the tips of the thumbs. On track and field it requires um, bashing some buttons on the controller as fast as you can and we tried a variety of techniques and um, we even tried putting socks on our hands to rub it against it very quickly. Um, but the best technique we found was actually to use a teaspoon. A friend of mine at work, he, uh, he saw us playing this game and ended up getting his own spoon from home that he found. Um, with a nice rounded edge and then practiced solidly for two weeks until he, uh, he was as good as us. And when he beat us, he actually held the spoon aloft to say this is the spoon of champions. The women in our life don't really get involved in this at all. Occasionally they'll try it but often they're not very good on the first go and after that we ridicule them so they're perhaps not so keen to get involved anymore. That's there was a time in my life when I was definitely the official gaming widow because I had a boyfriend who was so obsessed by his PlayStation that it was really very difficult to get him off it at the end of the night. Shut up! I'm playing! That used to drive me wild. I cannot see what the big deal is and I think people who play them are weird. Yeah, I think women are getting into it a lot more, especially with online gaming, games like Quake, where people can come together as clans. So it's becoming a much more sociable thing, which is great, because that will hopefully shed the whole nerdy image of gaming. The playing fields in London is just the kind of place to burn that anorak and join a clan. We started the playing fields because, quite frankly, we were fed up with computer gamers being portrayed as, as nerds. Millions of people play computer games. They can't all be socially inept. 
And so we put this place together, a computer game center allied with a bar. So you can play computer games with a human being with a beer in your hand. I think these people behind me are playing what I would call a sport. A good example of a type of sportsman I'm talking about is Sue Joy. He is a god. He is a David Beckham of computer gaming. Sue Joy first got into multiplayer games like Quake 3 when he was a student at Cambridge University. After college, I went to an investment bank uh, to work and they posted me in New York. While I was there, I, I was able to take part in the big American tournaments. It's really exciting, there's big prize money, and that, that's what really drew me into it. Eventually I thought, you know, why am I working at the office anymore? I could actually make a living from it and you know, make a good living, so I decided to do it. In fact, with prize money and sponsorship deals, every year he makes over $200,000. Oh. He's got a gun. A bloody big one. When I'm in London, I tend to go to the playing field so I can you know, get together with fellow gamers. Run, sir. Where is he? I see him. I won't run. Oh, I died. Oh, I blew myself up. Oh, I don't believe that. It's competitive. It takes skill. It takes practice. It's a bit, it's a bit like the Wild West. You've got people just always wanting to take you down. I'll play him again, yeah, and I'll use my comfy, and I will <laughs> destroy him. You know, it's just going to get ridiculous. You're going to get to a point where you actually, when you're fighting, you really are fighting. You're actually getting beaten up. <laughs> I used to like the old games. I like the old games, like the Pac-Man. Manic Miner. Space Invaders. Pong. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. And if you're into gaming nostalgia, then Computer Exchange is almost certain to have the machine of your dreams. First of all, we employ geeks. Uh, it's part of our branding. It's we employ geeks, thanks. people who know everything about games. You're welcome. Yeah, sure. And then we turn them into retailers. Um, geek retailers, as it were, and so we, we, we attract a lot of knowledgeable customers. You get people coming in here, um, they're looking for the PlayStation 2, they're looking for the Game Boy Advance, they come down here and see games that they were playing 10 years ago that they can pick up for next to nothing and they'll, they'll buy those as well. We've got ZX81, ZX Spectrums, an original Pong machine, a PC Engine, Neo Geo, Vectrexes. Did you get out much as a kid? No. No, I'm new neither. <laughs> Maybe the next step for gaming fanatics is to bring their favourite characters to life. I work on Wall Street for a traditional law firm. It's a very relaxed atmosphere and I enjoy it a lot. But in my spare time, I like to dress up like my favourite computer game character. I got into Lara Croft a year ago when I bought myself a PlayStation.